So, hello and welcome to, to this week's YMC cast, looking a little different from normal. I'm out and about this week. I'm off on a bit of an adventure for this session, week's YMC cast. For this week's YMC cast, I'm absolutely delighted to be taking a tour of the new room in Bristol with Mandy Briggs, who is the education officer for the new room. Uh, in this, this little clip that you can see playing at the moment, we've got here the statue of Charles Wesley, which is right at the front of the new room and is a really nice and brilliant way to be able to enter in. So I'm standing here in uh, the cafe at the new room and the cafe is part of the new visitor centre at the new room, which opened in 2017. Um, there was a real need for better hospitality and better facilities at the new room and so the vision of the horse fair project was to create a whole new visitor centre in the courtyard um, and as you can see uh, we've now got this fantastic cafe which uh, lots of people come in to use maybe people who've never been on site before um, and so in, in the visitor centre itself we've got this cafe we've got a shop we've got uh, toilets uh, an improved library uh, we've got meeting rooms, offices, and all of those things really complement the, the original chapel. So John Wesley came to Bristol in March 1739. Uh, he'd been invited by George Whitfield, uh, who was pioneering a very unusual type of uh, connecting with people. He was riding out into the fields and to the workplaces around Bristol and he wasn't expecting people to come to him. He was going out and uh, talking to people about the gospel. Um, John Wesley thought that this was a strange way of doing things, but he joined George Whitfield in his preaching work. And eventually he realized that it would be good to uh, establish a meeting place in Bristol uh, for people to meet and to study and pray together and worship together. There had been a couple of smaller religious societies meeting in Bristol, um, but they were they were um, they didn't have a particularly uh, established meeting place like this. So in 1739, he uh, built a, he, he um, bought a plot of land here in the Horse Fair, and the first new room was built, which was quite a simple uh, a simple structure. Um, it was a meeting house where people could uh, to, could come and pray and worship and study the Bible. Um, services were often held early in the morning or late at night, so people could come before work or after work. Um, but there was also a real social justice side of the new room right from the start. Um, John Wesley employed teachers here to teach adults and children how to read and write. And he also operated a pharmacy here so if people were poor and couldn't afford medicines, they could come here to the new room for help. By 1748, the original new room was showing signs of wear and tear. It was starting to fall down. And um, John Wesley realised that he needed to uh, collect some more money and expand the building further. So after he had managed to, to collect donations, he engaged um, a Quaker architect who put together a design for a bigger enlarged chapel. And this included a balcony um, in the original chapel um, and rooms on top of the chapel called the preacher's rooms, um, which we will explore later. So this was a really crucial time in the development of the new rooms. So I'm standing here in the pulpit in the chapel and um, there's a really interesting architecture in the chapel that really shows you uh, what uh, the chapel has been like over the years. Um, this is the top pulpit where Wesley would have stood and other preachers would have stood uh, to preach. Uh, below me is another pulpit where people would have stood to read the Bible and to lead prayers and to lead the singing. Uh, below that is a small communion table. Originally, John Wesley encouraged people to go to the parish church to receive communion, but because they were associated with Wesley, uh, some people got turned away from the parish churches um, and refused communion. 
So eventually uh, Wesley gifted a communion table to the new room and um, started to run communion services here as well. Um, there's a couple of other lovely features in the new room. One is a clock, which was a present from John Wesley. Um, it's still going now, and you might be able to hear it ticking in the background. Um, and we've also got an organ from the 18th century, which uh, is still played regularly and uh, is a real feature of the chapel. So I'm sitting in the pews um, here at the new room. Uh, but these pews, although they look like they've been here uh, for a long time, they were actually added in Victorian times and weren't here uh, when John Wesley was around. Um, in John Wesley's time, when people came to services at the new room, people would stand up in the middle of the chapel, or they would sit on the benches, the wooden benches at the sides, or they would sit up in the gallery. And this meant that actually, even though the new room is not very big, often up to a thousand people could cram in uh, to a service at any one time. Um, this was particularly evident in 1788. By this time, Wesley uh, was an old man, but he had become increasingly convinced that the abolition of uh, the transatlantic slave trade was incredibly important. He'd written a book called Thoughts on Slavery, and he advertised the fact that he was going to speak in the chapel um, about this topic. And his journal says that the chapel was packed from end to end with people. And as he spoke, there was a huge disruption in the chapel. The pe and he says in his journal that the people rushed upon each other. Um, we think that maybe that was people who agreed with him and people who disagreed with him. Um, because there are a lot of merchants in Bristol who were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. And there was essentially a riot in the chapel when he spoke about slavery, um, and you can read about it in his, in his journal. But for me, that really points to the fact that John Wesley was a man who um, was not afraid to stand up for what he believed in, and that really inspires me. So um, the new room has been featured in uh, several TV series over the years, and probably the most famous one is the BBC series Poldark. Um, the Poldark crew took over the new room for a week in 2015 to film a whole episode here, and they, they turned the new room into a courtroom uh, to film the trial of Ross Poldark um, who was played by Aidan Turner. So it's probably fair to say that that week we didn't really get a lot of work done uh, because we were watching the filming, but it was great to uh, see how the crew transformed uh, the chapel. It was really fantastic to meet the cast and the crew. And of course, the new room was seen all around the world. And we still get people visiting us now and commenting on the fact that they're polled up fans. So welcome to the museum here at the new room. Uh, these are essentially the rooms on top of the chapel that uh, John Wesley included in his 1748 redesign. And when we opened the visitor centre in 2017, this included um, a complete reimagining of these rooms on top of the chapel. And uh, it now, uh, these rooms, there's 12 rooms, and they tell the story of the Wesleys and early Methodism, and also explore some of Wesley's uh, beliefs and writings. So let's have a look. So I'm sitting here in the common room, which is the main room uh, upstairs over the chapel. And this is the room where the preachers used to meet uh, before and after services. Um, sitting around a large table, they used to share meals together, provided by uh, Sarah, uh, one of the housekeepers here. Uh, they used to pray together here, and they used to uh, do the plan, um, sitting up here in the common room. Um, this is the main room, but around the common room there are smaller rooms, and these were bedrooms, um, where the preachers could stay, overnight safely in Bristol before collecting their horse from the stable and going on their way to their next appointment the day after. Um, all the rooms in the museum have now been converted so that each room tells a different part of the story of John Wesley and Methodism. So these are John Wesley's rooms uh, upstairs in the museum 
and uh, it's split into two. There's a, a small meeting room with chairs and tables, and there's also a small bedroom. And this is where Wesley would stay every time he came to Bristol, which was frequently. And these rooms were kept for him uh, for his for his particular use. Um, what I like about these rooms is that we put a, a figure of John Wesley uh, standing by the windowsill, looking out the window and writing a letter. And this was because um, John Wesley really believed in um, good health and well-being. And one of his, one of his beliefs was that you shouldn't sit down too long to work. It was much better to stand up and, and um, write letters and do your correspondence. So when he was at the new room, he used to stand up at the windowsill, there's a, sl a sloping windowsill, uh, and write his letters. And so um, we've tried to recreate that, and he's standing in his bedroom, looking out the window and writing his letters. So this is one of the windows in the common room and um, there's a great story attached to this window. The story goes that um, if John Wesley was at the new room uh, but he wasn't taking the service, he would stand up here and he would look down from here into the chapel and listen to a uh, preacher who was actually taking the service uh, just to listen in on what they were saying but also to make sure they weren't going on too long. Um, which we love. We don't know if this is exactly true, but it's a good story. Um, the other thing that's fascinating about this window is that actually uh, we got visited by an 18th century Banksy. Um, <laughs> we call this our 18th century graffiti because if you look really closely, you probably won't be able to see it from here, but um, there, is, uh, there are words scratched into the glass and if I just read to you what it says, On brittle glass I brave my name, a follower of the bleeding lamb, but thou canst show a nobler art and grave thy name upon my heart. And this was written by Francis Wolfe, who was a preacher from Cornwall. Um, there are two other inscriptions that people have scratched upon the glass. Prepare to meet thy God. And that was written by a Methodist preacher, Nicholas Manners. And the other small piece of writing says, the Lord have mercy on my soul. And that was written by G.E. Ham in 1776. And it's thought that he was a preacher from Ireland. So it's absolutely fascinating that people have come here um, as preachers and have thought to just scratch something onto the glass. It's a bit like I was here, but in uh, 18th century form. So the board that you can see on the wall here is called John Wesley's Principles in the 18th Century, a political manifesto for today with a question mark. And the question mark is important because John Wesley didn't actually write this list of uh, principles. Um, it was actually our historian, Gary Best, who uh, has looked through and read a lot of John Wesley's letters and journals and writings and put together this board as a talking point um, because he wanted to uh, enable people to, to think about the sort of things that John Wesley stood for during his life. Uh, we tend to think that John Wesley was a man on a horse riding around the country sharing the gospel. And of course, that's really important. But there were so many other things that he was committed to and campaign for. And if you look at the board, you, know, you can see that there are um, some really important things on here, things that we still talk about today. Reduce the gap between rich and poor. Seek to ensure full employment. In introduce measures to help the poorest, including a living wage. Offer the best possible education. Um, some of the other examples are promote equal treatment for women, which is still um, a very important debate now. Wesley really valued the contribution of women to the early Methodist church. He saw that if they felt called to preach, um, he would let them preach. He didn't always call them preachers, sometimes he called them exhorters instead, but he very much encouraged women to be class leaders and exhorters and leaders in the early Methodist church. John Wesley called the new room a light in the city. And now that um, the visitor centre has been open for a few years, our vision for the future is to try and carry on, uh, carry on his work. Um, we have a sign on the door that says, all are welcome. And we're very committed to living this out. 
um, to, to continue being a light in the city. There are so many different people that um, now use this building in its, in its new form. Um, there are people who just come in for a cup of coffee, there are people who come in because they want some peace and quiet in the city, or they want to come and pray. Some people come in and uh, are in distress and are seeking assistance or somebody to talk to. And uh, we have two chaplains um, and members of staff who can be alongside people. Um, but there's lots of different groups that use the new room as well. We have a community choir, um, a chat and craft group, we had a, a community film club, um, we had mental health groups and other groups meeting on the premises. Um, and then there are different Methodist groups that use the, uh, the meeting rooms upstairs as well. So on any one day, there's usually a lot happening here. Um, so that phrase, a light in the city, is something that we really want to take forward into the future. So we're ending our tour of the new room here at John Wesley statue outside in the Rugby courtyard. And this statue has been here since 1932. It's made of bronze and there's only two of them in the world. The other one is in America. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about um, the new room. Um, if you want to find out more, then um, we are online. You can go to our website which is newroombristol.org.uk. Um, we're also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as New Room Bristol. Thanks very much and hope you really enjoyed.